you're in class. You didn't do the reading. Your professor is lecturing. You're kind of distracted by your busy week, so you're doodling in your planner. And as your prof comes to the end of her sentence, her voice goes up, signaling a question, and then she stops talking. What's your first reaction? You look up, right? The professor paused, and even as a distracted member of the audience, you know it's time to refocus. That is the power of the pause. The pause is one of the easiest tools to master. And once it's in your toolbox, it can help you better engage your audience. When people in the audience listen to speakers, they expect one-way communication. This can put them in a trance state where they don't even pay attention. Even if you didn't pause for the question, if you just paused for emphasis, you'll refocus your audience's attention on your message, your point for communicating. When you pause in a real life speech, you give yourself an opportunity, an opportunity to collect valuable feedback from your listeners. It might be responses to a question, or if not asking a question, the time of a pause can help you non-verbally scope your audience to make sure that everyone looks like they understand what you're saying. The secret to using a pause well for either questions or dramatic effect is to have a transition plan to get out of the pause and back on track in your speech. Pauses can give you a chance to pose a question to your audience, getting all eyes off you, which can be a sneaky way to regroup yourself and manage your anxiety. I recommend planning pauses in your preparation outline and practicing them, really practicing them. Practicing them by pausing for five seconds and experiencing the silence without verbal fillers. Then scale back and figure out which pauses are the most effective. Pause is powerful, people. You've got this. For ideas on how you can remove um and verbal fillers from your pauses, from your speeches, there's a video for that. Subscribe to my channel.